Good evening, boys and girls. I have a special story tonight. It's called The Tale of Peter Rabbit. This story is by Beatrix Potter. Let's begin. The Tale of Peter Rabbit. Once upon a time, there was four little rabbits, and their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. They lived with their mother in a sandbank underneath the root of a very big tree. Now, my dear, said old Mrs. Rabbit one morning, we may go into the fields or down the lane, but don't you go into Mr. McGregor's garden. And there she is telling them. Your father had an accident there. He was put in a pie by Mrs. McGregor. Now run along and don't get into any mischief. I'm going out. Mischief means like getting into trouble and doing things you shouldn't really be doing. Then old Mrs. Rabbit took a basket and her umbrella and went through the wood to the baker's. She bought a loaf of brown bread and five currant buns. Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail who were good little bunnies, went down the lane to gather blackberries. But Peter, who was very naughty, ran right away to Mr. McGregor's garden and squeezed under the gate. First, he ate some lettuce and some French beans, and then he ate some radishes. And then, feeling rather sick, he went to look for some parsley. But round the end of a cucumber frame, whom should he meet but Mr. McGregor? Mr. McGregor was on his hands and knees planting young cabbages, but he jumped up and ran after Peter. Peter waving a rake and calling out, Stop, thief! Hey, Roxy. Peter was dreadfully frightened. He rushed all over the garden, for he had forgotten the way back to the gate. He lost one of his shoes among the cabbages. and the other shoe amongst the potatoes. After losing them, he ran on four legs and went faster so that I think he might have got away altogether. He had not, unfortunately, run into a gooseberry net and got caught up by the large buttons on his jacket. It was a blue jacket with brass buttons quite new. Peter gave himself up for loss and shed big tears, but his sobs were overheard by some sparrows who flew to him in great excitement. He implored them to exert himself. He needed to get some help. Mr. McGregor came up with a sieve, which he intended to pop upon the top of Peter, but Peter wiggled out just in time, leaving his jacket behind him. and rushed into the tool shed and jumped into a can. It would have been a beautiful thing to hide in if it had not had so much water in it. Mr. McGregor was quite sure that Peter was somewhere in the tool shed, perhaps hidden underneath the flower pot. He began to turn them over carefully, looking under each. Presently, Peter sneezed. Ka-choo! Mr. McGregor was after him in no time. and tried to put his foot upon Peter, who jumped out a window, upsetting three plants. The window was too small for Mr. McGregor, and he was tired of running after Peter. He went back to his work. Peter sat down to rest. He was out of breath and trembling with fright. He had not the least idea which way to go. Also, he was very damp. 
was sitting in the can. After a long time, he began to wander about, going lippity-lippity, not very fast, and looking all around, he found a door in a wall, but it was locked, and there was no room for a fat little rabbit to squeeze underneath. An old mouse was running in and out over the stone doorstep, carrying peas and beans to her family in the wood. Peter asked her the way to the gate, but she had such a large Peter mouth that she could not answer. She only shook her head at him, and Peter began to cry. Then he tried to find his way straight across the garden, but he became more and more puzzled. Presently, he came to a pond where Mr. McGregor filled his water cans. A white cat was staring at some goldfish. She sat very, very still, but now and then the tip of her tail twitched as if it were alive. Peter thought it was best to go away without speaking to her. He had heard her about cats from his cousin, little Benjamin Bunny. He went backwards toward the tool ship, but suddenly, quite close to him, he heard the noise of a hoe. Scratch, scratch, scritch. Peter scuttered underneath the bushes. But presently, as nothing had happened, he came out and climbed upon a wheelbarrow and peeped over. The first thing he saw was Mr. McGregor hoeing onions. His back was turned towards Peter, and behind him was the gate. Peter got down very quietly off the wheelbarrow and started running as fast as he could along a straight wall behind some black currant bushes. Mr. McGregor caught sight of him as the, the corner, but Peter did not care. He slipped underneath the gate and he was safe at last in the wood outside the garden. Mr. McGregor hung up the little jacket and the shoes for a scarecrow to frighten the birds. Peter never stopped running or looked behind him till he got home to the big fir tree. He was so tired that he flopped down upon the nice soft sand on the floor of the rabbit hole and shut his eyes. His mother was busy cooking. She wondered what he had done with his clothes. It was a second little jacket and pair of shoes that Peter had lost in the fortnight. I am sorry to say that Peter was not very well during that evening. His mother put him to bed and made some chamomile tea, and she gave a dose of it to Peter. One tablespoon to be taken at bedtime. But Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail had bread, milk, and blackberries for supper. The end. So there you have it. The Tale of Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter. Beatrix Potter wrote Peter Rabbit and many other little stories, but she wrote them in little books for children's little hands. I hope you enjoyed their story this evening. Have a great night.